So my neighbor and I completed a lawn renovation at his house just a couple weeks ago now. And today I wanted to tell you how you can do all of these steps in one weekend and show you the actual steps to get this lawn renovation done. The one caveat here that I have to mention at the beginning is that you do need to plan this out in advance because you do need to kill the grass before you're going to do this lawn renovation. Usually that will take a couple weeks minimum and sometimes even longer would be better, maybe up to a month. So if you are planning this out, that would be a good thing to plan in advance is to make sure that you have time to get this done before you start the renovation. So the first thing that you need to know is how much square footage you're dealing with. So you need to measure out your area. This is a very simple process. You can also do this online sometimes by using satellite light views, but I like to just take a tape measure length by width. That'll give you the square footage of your yard. Make sure you write that down and make yourself a little map. That way, all of this process going forward, you're going to know how to calculate how much seed you need, how much fertilizer you need, and all of those things in general going forward too. It's awesome to have a map of your yard and know how much square footage you're dealing with. So scalping is actually taking your mower, setting it at the lowest setting, going over the yard and scalping off all the dead grass that's there. The reason that you want to do this is you want to minimize all of this dead grass that's in the way so that when you actually seed, it will get down to the soil layer. You don't want the seed sitting on top of a bunch of dead grass. So you're going to do that scalping phase to get rid of that and bagging it obviously is important to remove the clippings. You don't want to be leaving the clippings onto the yard and having them in the way of getting that seed down to the soil. So after that step, it's also a good idea to thin out that dead grass that's there. You want to be able to see down to the soil layer. So you want to thin it out enough to where you can see the soil and there's not a big matted amount of dead grass there. You can use very various tools to do this. We use a manual thatching rake. You can use an electric dethatcher if you happen to have one. You can also rent a machine like this usually at rental places, but if you don't have a huge large area to do, you can get this done with a manual thatching rake. Or over time, I found it really nice to have one of those electric machines. They're not extremely expensive, so it might be something that you want to consider. Now the next optional step you could think about would be core aeration. So if you haven't been aerating your yard or you feel like it's pretty compacted, so probably before you would do that actual leveling would be when I would do the core aeration. On one of my previous renovations, I did this step and then I did the leveling work after that. So that would be something I would consider if you wanna do core aeration, make sure you're doing that before your leveling step. Personally, I think it's a great opportunity to take this time when you're going to do a renovation and do some leveling or smoothing of the surface. We're just using regular soil here. This is green topsoil that would be very similar to the soil that is in our yards here. So we bought this just from a local landscape place. They came and delivered this. This is eight cubic yards. So this is just to smooth out the surface. We're not doing any major grade changes, but we just wanted to get this opportunity to smooth everything out, make mowing more enjoyable going forward, and take out all those little bumps that were in the yard previously. So we started off with this leveling process, just spreading out your soil. Of course, if you have some means of doing this without having to do it all by hand, that helps a lot, but we did this in about three hours with two people. So not too bad to get everything spread out, everything nice and even, get it smoother, get it level and have it looking good before we move on to the next steps. So I know some of you are probably going to wonder what should you use soil versus sand? I've done a couple of videos on this this year talking about that topic. For me, I recommend if you're going to be doing your seeding, then use a soil type at this point. It's going to help you hold in more moisture. It's going to have some nutrients in it so that new grass can take some of that out of there as well. There's nothing wrong with sand, but it gets more difficult. So for me personally, I would do the soil now. And if you want to do leveling later and you want to consider sand at a later date, I would do that after the fact, after you've already done your seeding and have an established yard. Now this leveling tool that I bought a couple years ago has been really awesome for actually doing a lot of smoothing in a yard or whenever you're doing renovation work. I found it to be a great tool to spread the things out evenly, fills in your low spots and just smooths everything out. So it's a great tool to have in every single renovation that I do. I'm really glad that I actually bought that thing, but this is one thing that I really enjoy as far as tools that I own that's really helped my renovations. So now we took a lawn roller and just went over the surface to slightly pack everything in. It doesn't need to be a ton of weight that's in there or doing any major compaction, but after that leveling work, you have a lot of loose soil there. So you wanna make sure for the most part, it's going to stay where you want it to stay. Just a light roll at this stage will do that for you. You can also rent one of these rollers. I used to rent these, I think, 
for maybe $25 or something locally for a day. So check your area if you do need to rent a tool like this. Usually you can find them fairly inexpensive. So now you're actually at the phase of putting down the seed. So remember the first thing that you did was measured out your area. This is going to be important so that you know how much seed you need to put down. Different types of grasses have different types of rates. In this lawn, I was using three varieties of Kentucky bluegrass. I've been testing these last year on the north side of my house and I had some of this seed left so I decided to mix these together evenly and use that as the basis for this yard. We'll also be adding a small amount of perennial ryegrass because perennial ryegrass will germinate very quickly. It will help hold all of that soil in place while the bluegrass is getting established and a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass is also what I have on my side yard and I think it looks great. So choosing a seed is extremely important as well. If you're going to go to all this work of doing a renovation, I highly recommend that you go ahead and spend the money on a good seed. Now, what is good seed? Well, there's testing that's done on elite varieties. These are extensive tests that are done for disease resistance, for color, for drought resistance, and all these things are important factors in your lawn going forward. So again, if you're going to take the time to do all of these steps, I would highly recommend to seek out a very good grass seed going forward and make sure you also buy enough of it so that in case you have some washouts, in case you have some areas that don't come in as thick as you thought that they should, you'll have some of the extra product left and it'll be the exact same seed. And you're not going out to buy something else that doesn't match what you have in your yard. So if you're looking for some grass seed options, I do have a link in the description. So I was going with three pounds per thousand square feet on the bluegrass. And we were just using a broadcast spreader here to put this onto the lawn. Now you can use a drop spreader if you happen to have one that works really well with seeding. Or if you were not doing all this leveling work, you could also probably use a slice seeder. That would be something that most people don't have as far as a tool that you would also have to rent. So a lot of times I just go with the simple method of broadcasting. And I found no reason to really switch this method because it's worked well for me. But again, there's different options for actually placing the seed down. But what you want to do is just pick a really low setting on your spreader. Start spreading to where it's coming out evenly, but not heavy, and then walk in multiple directions until you have a nice even coverage of the seed. After I laid down that Kentucky bluegrass, I then went to the perennial ryegrass and I put down a small amount of this. So after the step of the seed being down, I'll take a metal rake and I'll lightly rake this in. Now you don't want to place the seed too far under the soil, but having it slightly under that soil layer, especially in the bare soil areas, is going to help a lot. In the areas where you might have some dead grass left, the seed pretty much is going to fall down to that soil layer as soon as you water it and then the grass that's there will hold things in place pretty well. But any of these areas, especially with the bare soil, I like to lightly rake that in. Then after this step, I will take the roller back over that and I'll take it over everything that we just seeded to press that seed lightly into the soil. This is going to help with seed to soil contact. That's what the seed needs in order for it to grow the best. So a light rolling over everything is going to help to press that into the soil and give you great results. At this point is when you can decide if you'd like to use a pre-emergent for weed control. If you've had a lot of issues in your yard with weeds or maybe some POA, then this would be a step when you can use a product called Tenacity. This is safe to use at the time of seeding. It won't harm any of your actual grass seed that you put down, but it will help to prevent weeds that are coming up as you start to water. And it's a step that I usually take in order to just give myself the best success possible. But if you're not as comfortable with spraying and you'd like to put down a granular product, there is a starter fertilizer or a couple of them that actually have this same ingredient in there. And you can use this to put your starter fertilizer down and also have that pre-emergent product added at the same time. So spray the tenacity or actually use this granular fertilizer, that's up to you. In the past, I've usually done spraying on my renovations just because I had tenacity on hand, but you can make your own choice there. And so talking about starter fertilizer, we're going to use a product like this to help give it some phosphorus here at the beginning stages of the grass growing. It needs phosphorus for root development, so this is a good time to add a starter fertilizer or you can just get this locally at a store or wherever you wish and usually bag rates on the back are going to be pretty accurate for you in terms of doing a new lawn renovation and just choosing that rate that's on the bag. Now the next step in this process is I like to actually cover the areas that we seeded. Sometimes people will leave this step out but I found in the past that any areas that were covered compared to just areas that I left with bare soil or just left with some dead grass existing there I didn't have as nearly as quick of germination and as successful germination. So personally I've been using peat 
Moss in most of my renovations. I was talking to my co-host Ryan on our podcast a couple weeks ago when we were talking about renovations. He recommended a product like Mushroom Compost. It's not something that I have personally used, but he's used it pretty extensively on golf courses and in other renovation works that he's done. Another option would just be actually using compost itself, which would be a really light layer of compost that you could put over top of your seed or over top of your renovation areas. So whatever you choose here is kind of hard to say exactly what you need, but in terms of the peat moss that we used, we used the peat moss spreader that I have and that worked well to place a light layer over everything. These were three cubic foot bags as well that I had, and I believe we used seven of them to cover the 4,000 square feet that we had. Then we noticed a couple days in that there were some areas that could probably use a little more than we had. So we went back and got three or four more bags. So I'd say about 10 bags total is what was used for the 4,000 square feet. And if you are interested in this peat moss or compost spreader, you can check that out on my website. So if you have some slopes or other areas that you might be worried about washout, I have used a couple of different options on those. I've used straw blankets on a renovation. I've used one of these sort of wood fiber blankets on my other renovation on the north side of my house. And I've used some of that easy straw mulch that you can actually buy, I think, at some of the big box stores. And it has a tackifying material in it. So it's supposed to stick in place better. I found that out of all of these, that wood fiber blanket worked the best. On some of the larger areas that we completed a renovation on over at a friend's house, the straw blankets did a fairly good job on holding things in place there. The easy mulch was probably my least favorite. It does hold things in place, but I found it difficult to get a nice even layer there without smothering some of the actual new grass that I wanted to come up. So keep those things in mind. I still prefer to use a peat moss or compost type of product for a light covering, but it will sort of easily wash away in certain situations. So sometimes you need to have more on hand and you need to put more down after that may occur. So now we're actually to the watering step and not to say that any of these steps aren't important overall, but watering is going to be one of the most important things that you have to be on top of in order to have good success with your renovation. So we set up a DIY sort of system above the ground and many have asked, how come this doesn't have an in-ground system here put in? Well, just for budgetary reasons, not everyone can afford to do that. And personally myself, I also use this DIY system in my yard for many years, did many renovations and watered with this system before I had any in-ground. You just have to spend some time kind of thinking it out, figuring out where everything needs to go. But once you do that, it's sort of like having an in-ground in place because you place your heads in pretty much the exact same location and it works out well. That's exactly what we did here. If you're just going to go with some general sprinklers, then make sure you're prepared to get good coverage, to move them if you need to. And the problem just becomes with those that you have to kind of walk on the yard when you really don't want to sometimes. So if you'd like to learn more about this DIY system, I have a video from earlier this year that explains how to put it together and what the parts are that you actually need to build it. Otherwise, you can use other methods of getting the sprinkling done, but what you need to do is keep that seed from drying out in the initial stages of germination. So that's why I laid down some of that ryegrass as well, because I expected it to come up in three or four days, which is pretty much what I saw. And then the bluegrass was coming up around six to seven days. So I was probably watering around 10 a.m., another shot at about one, probably another shot of water around three or four, and then gauging whether it needed anything around seven 7 p.m. So those are not set times that it's going to work with everyone. It's going to be a factor of wind and temperature and humidity. But just keep in mind that you need to keep the seed from drying out. You don't want puddles sitting on the yard to where you're washing any of the seed or it's actually getting too wet, but you wanna make sure the water is consistent at this beginning point, and then you'll get that seed coming up and you can begin to taper the water off as we go with heavier amounts, but less frequent. A good soaking of water after the initial seeding is gonna be needed. Once you have that moisture in the ground there though, you'll find that usually it doesn't take nearly as much water to keep things going. So a good initial soaking of it will be good, and then do your maintenance as you go. Now going forward, as you notice things are growing in, you need to make a decision on when you would like to do that first mow. Really that comes down down to what height you would like to mow the grass at. So if we were targeting a height of two inches on this grass, we'd probably let it grow to about three inches and then make our first mowing at that time. So the only thing you wanna think about before that first mowing is let the ground dry out a little bit so that it's not gonna cause any major damage on the first mowing. If you have a manual reel mower or you can find one for cheap, this is what I love to use on the first couple mows of a renovation because you can pick it up. You don't need to make any turns in the corner and it's really light and able to get onto the yard without doing much damage. 
So after care of this, you could do another application in probably three to four weeks of starter fertilizer or another fertilizer. Then going forward, you can kind of make a decision. I like to spoon feed some fertilizers throughout the rest of the fall in lower amounts to feed the grass more consistently. You can check out more talk about this on our podcast. I'll link this in the description on some things that you can think about for aftercare. The last thing that you need to think about is just having patience. This takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. You're dealing with the weather as well. You might get some washout periods or you might have some major storms that kind of put a hindrance on what you were doing. Stay the course. Make sure you have extra materials that you can place down again and you will get there over time. I can promise you. I've had many renovations that did not go exactly as planned the first time, but the only thing you can do is just keep working on them and you'll find success in the end. So I hope this was helpful for you today. I'm going to have a whole bunch of links in the description and different videos that we talked about here on this video as well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.